All right, if you're using your computer or your phone or any kind of screen late at night, maybe right up until you go to sleep, probably for a lot of you, then you're probably getting a lot of blue light late at night. So you're staring at a bright laptop screen and seeing all this bright blue light right before you go to sleep is probably not great for your health. So there's been studies that say that if you're looking at this blue light right before bed, then it's kind of tricking your brain into thinking that it's actually daylight. And so your body is not really getting the right signals that it's actually time to go to sleep. And maybe you aren't getting tired when you should. And it's kind of affecting the quality of your sleep. Maybe it's going to take you longer to get to sleep. So that's what this program and others like it hope to achieve. What it does is later at night, it starts tinting the screen orange just so that it something more like candlelight. So instead of this bright blue light, you're getting something more like candlelight and maybe your body is getting more of the signals that it's getting late, it's time to sleep. And you know what? There's been scientific studies that prove that this really does help you with your sleep. And there's been scientific studies where it says it doesn't help at all. But you don't need to care about any of the science stuff. That's all for nerds. What you need is my own personal anecdotal recommendation in that this really does help me with my sleep. I do notice a difference whenever I started using it for the first time. And just having this orange tint on your screen later at night, it's just nicer on your eyes. So that's why I personally use it. But this blue light filter is not some new concept. This has been around for a while. So if you're on your iPhone or your Android or Windows or Mac OS, these all have options to automatically enable something like this at night. Even something like GNOME or KDE or most desktop environments have some option. But if you're using a window manager like me, like BSPWM, i3, DWM, then you are going to need to use something like Redshift right here. And so this is just a program, just a small little program that you can run on your command line that will basically tint your screen orange for you. So I'm just going to tell you how to set it up in this video. So first off, we're going to want to install this, of course. You can probably find it in your official repositories. So I'm on Arch Linux, so let me just install it with uh, pacman and install Redshift right here. And once you've installed this, then you can just run Redshift right here. And there's a couple of ways to do this. So you do need to pass in your location. And your location is basically how Redshift determines what time the screen should start dimming. And so the easiest way to do this would probably just to pass in your latitude and longitude. So you would do that with this dash L option. And then you're going to want to actually get your latitude and longitude. So of course you can just do that with any online service. Let's just say, for example, I'm in San Francisco. I don't actually live here, but if you do, my condolences. Let's just get latitude and longitude here. And let's grab any random website here. And the latitude and longitude numbers that you want are going to look something like this. Uh, you do need to pass in a negative right here if you live in the Western Hemisphere, say the Americas. So you don't want to put in something like this. You want this one right here. So let's just put this in here. And we're going to separate this with a colon right here. And once I put this in, now you're not actually going to be able to see this because it's not going to register on my screen recorder, but the screen is getting dimmer and it's giving me a nice soft transition instead of an abrupt jump. So that looks nice. And so if that's all you want, then you would just automatically start something like this up every time that you start your window manager. So in my case, I'm using BSPWM. So I would put this in my BSPWMRC, put in your i3 config or something, just this line right here. But if you want a config file, say you don't want to pass in your latitude and longitude every time, you can set that up. Uh, let me create a directory in my .config. It's going to be Redshift. And then you're going to want to create a file called redshift.conf. Right, like that. And then you can copy a sample configuration from the GitHub here. There is one right here. So you can just copy all of this paste it over here and then go through and manually configure things. You can put the latitude and longitude here. You can also make some other adjustments. Say if you want to change the temperatures for night and the temperatures for day, maybe you want it to be a little oranger or a little bit less orange, you can change that. But to be honest, you probably don't need to change much here. 
All I would personally do is just put in the latitude and longitude here. And of course, once you're done with that, just check to make sure that it's in your window manager startup script and you are done. Now, there are a few other options that I will go over. So you might also want it to geolocate your location. Maybe you don't want to manually pass in your latitude and longitude here. Maybe if you're traveling or you move somewhere across different time zones, then you'll want to automatically update your location. You don't want to manually look up the latitude and longitude every single time. That could be annoying. So I'll show you how you can automatically get your location if you want. And we're going to do that with this package called GeoClue. So let me actually just delete this because uh, I don't want it to get my latitude and longitude. I want to pass it in myself. So first off, let's install this package called GeoClue right here. So if you install this, then you should be able to just run Redshift and have it automatically just get your location. So you're not passing in any arguments here. You're just letting it run. And it will try to get the location automatically right here. But you might get some error like this. And this is what I had personally. This error is a little bit annoying but there is a nice fix that I found for it. So what I did is I added this service to system D and let me just uh, go over this real quick. So I just want to add this system D service just for this particular user. I don't really need it if I'm not logged in to this specific user and this specific graphical environment. So it's going to be in .configs slash system D slash user slash geoclue-agent.service. Geo so if you want a service just to start for this specific user and not if you're not logged in, then you would put it in this folder right here. Let me open this up. And basically what this is, is just telling uh, this GeoClue service to start up right here. And this is not mine. I just copied this from the Arch Wiki. So if you want, I will leave a link to this in the description. Let me just pull this off real quick. All right, so if you want to copy and paste this, if you're having the same problem, then I'll just leave a link to this wiki page right here. You can copy and paste this here. But once you've done that, then you can start it with systemd by going systemctl dash dash user and then enable. And let's enable it right now. So dash dash now and then geoclue dash agent dot service. Hit enter on that. So I, that should have started it up. So you can test it again by running Redshift right here and it will automatically pull your latitude and longitude. Let's just leave it running for a second. Uh, I'll blur this out so I don't dox myself. But after a few seconds, then it should automatically pull your location and then start up Redshift. So it'll dim the screen in a minute. And so if you're lucky, that'll work fine and it'll automatically get your location. Unfortunately, there are a lot of things that can go wrong with this program. So if you do need more help troubleshooting, I would check the Arch Wiki. Again, this is a really good resource. But that was the only problem I ran into personally, so that's probably good enough. There was one other issue I ran into, and it's just whenever Redshift started, the screen started flickering. And so it started flickering between the orange hue and just the normal hue. So if that happens, you just want to make sure that only one Redshift is actually running at one time. So just check your processes and if you have multiple red shifts here, just double check to make sure that you're only starting it in one place. So you don't want to be starting it with your window manager if you've already started it with systemd or something like that. And you can also start it with systemd if you want. I think by default it will install a redshift.service file into slash user slash lib slash systemd etc right here. And you can copy that to your uh, systemd user directory right here and then of course you would run enable on that as well with the dash dash user flag so this is actually what I do to start up I just use systemd to automatically start it up whenever my user logs in so that's up to you if you want to do that but that's basically it starting out redshift is not too difficult you just have to keep in mind there are a couple of gotchas in there so hopefully this helps you troubleshooting if you have any issues but once you have it automatically start up, then it will just automatically shift the hue to a nice orange hue every time that the sun sets. And so you will now be able to enjoy your computer late at night without burning your retinas out with the blue light.